Okay, we're back. We're live. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what? Uh, Lessons from the East, was it, Steve? What was the name of the show, Steve? Uh, we're facing, facing the East. Facing the East, okay. And, and we do this uh, yeah. usually on Monday at this time, and we talk to Steve as yep. Circle where, wherever Steve is, and uh, usually he's in Kobe, Japan. Uh, and are you in Kobe, mm -hmm. Japan today, Steve? Yes, I am. But next next uh, next weekend you're going to be here in Honolulu, uh, and then you, I you, will be there. Yes. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. catch you. We'll catch you over the weekend for another show. Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, you and Alan Meyer, who was on before, also. So that'll be great. So uh, today right. today is a de is a show that follows up on what we discussed just last hour uh, with somebody who is in uh, Bang Probang. You get that right? Uh, close. Uh, which is a 50,000 uh, person city in Laos. <clears throat> and he was there and oh. he was talking to us about various things that happened there, but also mostly um, uh, about, uh, about, about the uh, coronavirus as, as it appears in Laos. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's talk to, to you about the coronavirus too. Let's find out what, you know, what is happening in Japan and how people and the government are reacting because uh, you are much bigger than Laos, which is only 7 million people, um, and you have right. actual reported cases, and that makes a difference. So what's happening in Japan on, on coronavirus, uh, virus, uh, Steve? Yeah, well, uh, the, the government uh, is being proactive uh, in that it's just yesterday, actually, allocated funds to be able to handle... <clears throat> any further outbreak of the virus. Also, they've increased security um, for tourists coming in. Uh, as you probably know, when you walk through immigration, I think this is worldwide, they have those heat sensors that measures your temperature before you actually go through the immigration process. So I mean, they've beefed up the personnel around there. They are taking this very seriously. And as you noted, Jay, uh, Japan already has three cases of tourists from China. Uh, actually, all three of them are from the Wuhan area where this uh, virus originated. Uh, and they have been um, identified uh, and have been isolated. Some are in hospitals. One, one is in the hotel room, and she can't, uh, she can't leave that. So I think uh, those of us that have been in Asia, we remember SARS, which is uh, just a little, o a little over 20 years, a little under 20 years ago. Uh, that was a major virus outbreak. In fact, the coronavirus is uh, in the same family. Uh, it's uh, a similar type of virus. And I think in that case, it also that one also originated in China. Uh, I don't know why, why China is the, the, the king of these uh threatening viruses, but they seem to originate from that country. Uh, and at that time, uh, China was very slow to recognize the, uh, the danger of this virus. And uh, I think Asia overall uh, was a little bit slow to respond. So I think because of that, uh, the fact that 800 people died uh, from SARS, uh, there were about 8,400 cases uh, of SARS. I, Jay, you probably remember that. I don't know if it impacted Hawaii or not, but. Uh, it certainly was a big deal out here, uh, working in Asia at the time. So I, I think because of that, uh, the politicians remember uh, how poorly that was handled and how probably people needlessly died because of lack of response. Uh, China seems to be more proactive uh, about uh, dealing with this and uh, surrounding countries as well. But no, no major, there's no like embargo on Chinese tourists. I, I read Malaysia is now prevent, uh, not, uh, not Malaysia, Mongolia, is preventing Chinese tourists, period, from coming into the country until this is figured out. So Japan's not at that state, but it certainly has raised um, its defenses and has allocated funds in case this becomes uh, a much broader contagion within Japan. Hmm. Yeah, I, I read about the Mongolia also, and and uh, my reaction is, if if I were running a given country, um, I'd have to have a really good reason not to stop all the Chinese because they're the ones carrying it, is you know, and uh, they come yeah. in the country, they infect a few people before you know it, uh, that that country. Right. So maybe Mongolia is absolutely right about this. 
Um, you know, one of the big issues, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's been discussed, it's a culture point. What's, what's happening in China is Xi Jinping now belatedly uh, is, and the health authorities, they're belatedly reacting, and they're reacting in a very controlling manner. I mean, it's, I think it's the nature of the PRC. Mm -hmm. So he shut down uh, that province, what is it, Hubei province? Um, uh, Wuhan. Uh, and, and Wuhan, this, this city, and, and uh, he's, he's, he shut down an area which has, I don't know, more than 30 million people. Um, and you can't, right. you can't come and go, and the streets are empty, and everybody has to stay yeah. home, and you know, all these curfew kinds of things. And, and um, you know, the, yeah. the, you can't you can't bring in food or supplies. Uh, he's really shut the place down, and and that that's probably going to expand the way he's going. And then he's uh, dictated that uh, two hospitals will be built virtually overnight to handle uh, the, yeah. those who are infected. Yeah. And there, there are you know thousands of beds in these hospitals, and and uh, you know the Chinese they mm. can do that. They can build hospitals overnight with thousands of beds. They're quite amazing yeah. at that. So he's taking all these, uh, really? I, I, I want to say draconian steps, all these bold steps, these control steps. But the question, and maybe you've thought about this, the question is, does that work? Um, bold steps, does that work? I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, that, that governments should respond, and certainly they should. But the question is, when you have an mm -hmm. unknown, brand new coronavirus where nobody knows exactly, um, you know, what, what the dimensions are and what the molecular travel right. speed is and so um with this right. shutting everything down the right solution i think it's a culture point it's a it's a point in the pr prc and i, I probably i would guess that uh, that that the japanese have a different culture reaction to this and they're not going to be so you know overwhelmingly controlling all of a sudden and maybe more thoughtful more medical research oriented and figuring something out about it before they take these bold you know, social and governmental, geopolitical steps. You have any thoughts about the, the mm. comparison and how that works? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I know Japan better than than China, but certainly, you know, bo both actually, Jay, are, are one party states. Uh, basically, Japan's been run by the uh, Liberal Democratic Party, or called Jiminto in Japanese, since World War II. And but uh, the control that they have over the functions of government is nowhere near as comprehensive as what uh, China can do. I mean, and, and uh, their leadership, they can order a quarantine of an entire region. I don't know if that would actually be possible in Japan. I guess theoretically it would be, but it would be, I think, difficult for the leadership to actually do that unless it was a really severe threat. So there is a, I, I, believe, I agree with you, there's a cultural difference and also a political difference between the two countries. Mm -hmm. um, I, in my time in Japan, has there ever been anything, you know, where, uh, what, what are the numbers I read yesterday? So almost 3,000 people have been infected and 80 people have died already. I've never experienced that in Japan, so the government hasn't been challenged in that same respect in Japan. But I would think, based on my observation and study of Japan over the decades, that they would not be able to do exactly what China is doing. So I, I, I contrasted this breakout, the coronavirus, with SARS. In that case, of course, it's a different leader, but uh, China kind, kind of tried to hide it you know, and didn't report it, even though it was, the numbers were growing and so forth. In hindsight, it turned out that they actually made things worse. So maybe in this instance, uh, the leadership of China is going, okay, we, we were criticized uh, quite harshly 20 years ago for not responsibly uh, dealing with this threat and, uh, you know, not helping the rest of the world deal with it as well. But yeah. now China is make, taking these measures to perhaps demonstrate that they're being responsible. And they've also they've been sequencing the virus. You probably read this as well, Jay, and they've turned that over uh, freely to uh, researchers worldwide, basically asking for help to try and figure out how to deal with this. But it is remarkable when you're one-party state and the government in China has that much control that you can just shut down 30 million people basically overnight. Well, I think, I think the police will respond to whatever he wants and... Um... They are strong in their response. Yeah, uh, I, you know. Um, yeah, there's another another point though. The, the Chinese New Year holiday is 
already begun. And um, the I, I read that the governor of the Wuhan area was saying that there's probably three million. I read as many as five million Chinese people from that area that are traveling right now. And uh, I would guess the percentage of them are traveling internationally. <clears throat> so they're out there already. They're, they're Chinese people. They're in Japan. You know, they're, they certainly come here. They're going to come to Hawaii. Uh, I was in uh, Las Vegas two years ago during Chinese uh, New Year. I couldn't believe the whole place looked Chinese. It was remarkable how many tourists were there. So I'm sure... They're in the United States in, in large numbers already. Yeah, I was in Sydney. So I don't know. I, I was in Sydney a couple of years ago uh, at uh, Chinese New Year time, and the whole the whole city of Sydney was Chinese. It was it was really interesting. Yeah, it it's the in largest great numbers. Yeah, largest movement of, of it's the largest movement of people in the world. Period. I guess it used to be the Hajj in, in the Middle East, but no longer. Now that the Chinese have become wealthy and they can travel. There's millions and millions of people that are going to be traveling. Well, so I think maybe that, in part, is why the world is responding so uh, actively, and why Japan is concerned and beginning to build its defenses uh, for a potential outbreak here. Yeah, I, and I, I had the impression that some of the people who left uh, Wuhan left because they wanted to get away from the uh, quarantine. They they saw it coming, <laughs> and uh, it, was not, it was not just yeah. New Year's travel. It was let me get out of here. Um, before they shut the place down, and and you're right, it was altogether right. five million people left that area, uh, you know, and, and from Wuhan or somewhere else, and potentially those people are spreading a disease. Um, so yeah. in in other countries, I mean, all, in 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 uh, SARS, there were eleven countries involved. There are already more than eleven yeah. countries now that are involved, and it's only a few days yeah, after this has become public. Yeah, this seems to be taking off much faster. And by the way, just a, a very a side note, uh, I was working in Korea during SARS, and there were no outbreaks of SARS in Korea, which was surprising because other Asian nations experienced that. And they claimed that eating kimchi was the reason why <laughs> Korea did not have SARS. So why do I feel that's a... I'm just telling you, Jay, maybe, maybe you want to be on the safe side here because there's the same family of viruses. You may want to go buy some uh, kimchi, some high-quality like, kimchi. I like kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's the secret. This will be in the movie and the sequel. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's very scary so because they don't have a handle on it. Although he... Xi Jinping has, um, you know, yeah. he has a certain amount of medical expertise available in the country. China has come a long way in medical research and development of vaccines and the like uh, since uh, uh, Xi was mm. there. Their biochemistry and their medicine is way beyond what it was in 2002. Um, but uh, so yeah. they've done, they've already done some work. He's built some teams. He's probably dedicated more people yeah. to focus on this than we have in the United States, which is interesting. Yeah, um, and, and that's another yeah, I, question about whether the United States government is doing the appropriate thing. Um, but but uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't think this is. That. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a virus, and viruses are viruses, and they mutate, yeah. uh, and it's very hard to understand them and catch them. Um, and you know, who's right. to say what what the real problem is here? They may require a long time to develop a vaccine. Meanwhile, the thing is moving right. like wildfire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember reading not too long ago. Gates was mentioning he was kind of predicting. And I, I don't want to fear monger at all, but this is Gates, mm -hmm. you know, and he's spending a lot of money on medical research uh, to try and you know, fight the malaria and so forth. So mm -hmm. he said that at some point in the near future, there will be a, pandem a pandemic disease like like this one potentially, and that the the death would not be thousands but actually millions. He he thinks that that will happen at some point. So hopefully it's not this this case. So hopefully they'll be able to sequence this virus and figure out how to beat it. But anyway, he thinks that this that kind of a uh, massive death toll will occur at some point. It's just uh, I guess his understanding of of the medical area and the cultivation of these viruses and so forth. Yeah. Now, two points but, uh, on that. Another thing. Two, yeah. point, two points on that. Go ahead. One, one is the sequencing thing. I, I, I just I just recalled that in fact. The Chinese um, medical teams that have been assigned to this in the past few days have already sequenced the virus. 
and and shared the sequence yeah. and shared the sequence. So the medical community mm-hmm. globally now has the opportunity to find, to, you know, find out what's going on and maybe to stop it somehow uh, with some kind of medicinal, you know, uh, a, 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 you know, cure kind of uh, medicine or or possibly a, a vaccine. With although that's hard. Um, that's one thing. Right. Um, the other thing is that um, you know this is largely a question of of burning out because uh, the way it ended in 2003 was it just sort of burned out. It's not not we didn't do too much. It just burned itself out. Mm, I see. Um, and, oh, okay. And I MERS in 2012, the same thing. I mean, uh, something like 8,000 oh. people infected in each case, and 800 died. Yeah. And of the 800. Twenty yeah. percent uh, uh, of those were healthcare workers. Pretty scary, as as opposed uh, yeah. as opposed yeah, yeah. as opposed to um, uh, uh, the the disease in in the Congo. Um, and, uh, uh, I forget the name now. The disease in the Congo, where they they it comes mm-hmm. and goes, and uh, as it comes and goes, uh, science has been able to find vaccines. So there are vaccines now. And, and the vaccines actually mm. work. The problem is that people do not accept the vaccines. So there's a social overlay on how you do this. And, oh, yeah. and I think that the common denominator in all of this is the social overlay. Uh, because people, you got to get mm. people to behave in a certain way, you know, to, to contain it, to isolate it, and let it burn itself out. Anyway, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, and so, so, and so, yeah, is it Ebola? Is, is that the disease you were thinking of, Jay? Yeah, Ebola. Ebola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what, one thing that's interesting, you mentioned some of the cultural aspects of, of how to deal with these types of diseases. Um, in Japan, when you arrive here, you notice that many people are wearing facial masks. Mm-hmm. And as an American, you're you're thinking, oh, they're afraid that they're going to pick up a, a, a disease from somebody else. But in fact. Once you are here a little while, you realize that Japanese people are wearing those masks because they are sick, and they don't want to make others sick. So the use of surgical masks and these face, facial masks are quite common, and the motivation for that is to try and limit the spread of disease when you recognize that you are ill yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, this is one thing that if, if this did take off is kind of a cultural practice already yes because japanese people care about each other uh, and they're willing to wear masks to protect others this would i think in a way limit the spread of the disease if indeed these facial masks actually work I, i've read that some people think they do and some people think that they don't well in china they don't have enough, I, I, enough, I, enough I, masks to go around yet and uh, the call is out oh for... yeah you know J- yeah, I was in Costco uh, a couple days ago shopping for my family, and uh, there was a Chinese couple that was in front of me, and they had a huge uh, pallet. They had like 25 boxes of facial masks. So I'm, they're either I'm they're probably going back to China. I, I've heard that the prices of facial masks there have gone up by six or seven times. So they were making an investment. They probably paid, paid for their airplane ticket just by purchasing those facial masks here in Japan at a cheaper rate. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. One, one other thing too that kind of cou- counterbalances uh, this the the government reaction to this disease, and that is uh, already hotels, uh, department stores are complaining that the number of Chinese, which is the major group of tourists that come to Japan, period, but especially during this this time frame during the Lunar New Year, uh, the numbers are falling off dramatically. So they see it. So hotel cancellations are up significantly. Uh, the Chinese tourists that are shopping in the department stores in Osaka, 80, the, the, the number of shoppers during Lunar New Year is 80% Chinese. So Japan has de- developed a dependency on Chinese tourism, and now that the Chinese government has banned group tours, they just did that, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before, uh, the, there's an economic impact. Yes. So you can see uh, there's the government wants to protect the Japanese citizenry, but they don't want to go overboard to the point where even fewer Chinese come because then 
some industries that are dependent on Chinese tourists are going to complain as well. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Obviously, public health is number one, but economic is, interests also are at play when tourism, which is a major, which, which is the fastest growing industry in Japan, as we've talked about before in previous shows, and when that's impacted negatively, that hurts a lot of in, uh, businesses here locally. Well, I, I uh, so it could cause I, actually. If I could just finish, Dave, it, it's actually if the number is really significantly, uh, the number of tourists significantly goes down, the GDP. Japanese GDP, which is not so high to begin with, the, the growth rate could go down by a tenth of a percent, or uh, or tw uh, you know one or two point uh, percentage off the GDP for uh, 2020. It, it has that significant an effect. Well, I think it's, it's it's kind of like terrorism. It's like weapons of mass destruction, like bioterrorism. People get panicked, and they slow down their economic activity. It's not, it's not just the government. It's yeah. everybody, everybody gets scared, and they stop doing the things that you know, contribute to the, the national product. Um, and so uh, the market went down over 200 points this morning. I don't know exactly, but it was a substantial drop yeah. Yeah. and clearly related to, right. to this epidemic. Yeah, the Nikkei went down by 2% yesterday, and it's because of this virus outbreak. And the uncertainty, you know, business hates uncertainty, and this is a huge uncertainty right now because they can't they don't know yet how it's being spread and how much this will impact uh, Japan or the rest of Asia well let's get let's get some advice so, from you Steve Let, let's get some advice what is your advice I, to the J Japan government what would you tell them to do at this point I, I very rarely um, agree with what the Japanese government does especially uh, the uh, the current leadership. I think we've talked about that a couple of times. I'm not a big fan of the current uh, Prime Minister Abe. Okay. I think he's uh, not really helped, the, helped uh, the country over the last six or seven years. But in this instance, I, I think they're, they are pr proactive, but I don't think they're pushing too far uh, and, you know, making the Japanese people feel scared more than maybe they would naturally be when they read about this type of thing in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, in this instance, I, I agree with how they're handling this so far. Um, so they're they're beefing up the defenses at the at airports and where tourists come in to try and catch this if they can. They've allocated funds just in case this outbreak becomes more severe. Uh, they're already figuring out where to put these patients, which hospitals to put them in. A hundred different hospitals have been identified in Japan that would uh, take these patients. So, so obviously they have quarantine facilities there. So I'd say at this point, so far what the Japanese government is, is doing is responsible and I think is not crossing the line to where it's uh, polarizing or making the fear level go up. Yeah, one thing that I haven't seen. Well, I, 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 I almost, it almost hurts me to say that that the Japanese <laughs> government is doing a good job here, but I guess I have to be honest with you. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. One, one thing that I, that I haven't seen it in print, but I'm surmising and see what your reaction is, that they are able to confirm the, uh, you know, the existence, the infection in, in a given person. They're able to tell us with pretty much total yeah. certainty that this person, this individual, is infected or not. So I gather from that that there must be a test. The, the medical community must have a test to determine this virus as opposed to other viruses. Flu, for example. Um, yeah. And I give them credit for that, for having the test and having it available so quickly. Yeah, um, yeah that's correct. In the news, they, they've... Uh... Some Chinese tourists have gone to the hospitals and they're, they're showing flu symptoms, uh, and, but they don't have the coronavirus. They have some other type of virus. So there is, you're right, a test that they can determine whether or not it's a severe infestation with the coronavirus or it's just a more common uh, cold or influenza. Let me ask you for a little, uh, yeah, a little more advice, Steve. Um, what about the United yeah. States? The United States, yesterday, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, who was so heavily involved in the impeachment trial, um, got up and mm. made a statement which was way outside the impeachment trial. He said, we have a, we have a serious problem here, and uh, the CDC 
has a special fund of $85 million, which it can release on the determination that we have an epidemic. Uh, the CDC must make that determination, and then bingo, um, on that alone, $85 million is released to the medical community uh, in order to, in order to yeah. deal with this, this epidemic. On the other hand, yeah. uh, uh, Trump said, <clears throat> uh, uh, he made a kind of a bland statement about everything is going to be fine, uh, which I think is, is, again, as so many things he says, is not based on fact or evidence. But that was his address. Mm. Everything is going to be fine. While Schumer is saying they haven't released the money yet, they haven't treated it as an yeah. ep epidemic. And I really wonder, you know, you talk about whether the Chinese government is being candid with us, whether the American government is being candid mm. with us. What is your advice to the American yeah. government, Steve? Yeah, well, clearly Japan made that decision. Just with the three instances of, uh, of uh, identification of the virus here in, in Japan, they did what Schumer is saying the United States should do. So the Japanese government made that decision quickly, and that's why these funds have been released uh, to the medical community to be able to fight this disease uh, you know, if it becomes a, a, a bigger threat. So they have made that decision, and I would imagine the United States should do that as well. Uh, there are, there's going to be instances of this in, in the United States. I, I can't imagine. You know, there's so many countries. Well, there already is instances in the United States, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. It's already been identified there. Yes. So it's, several cases. Yeah. Yes. I don't, it's not a large number. Yeah. It's not a large number, but clearly there are people coming into the country that are carrying this virus. Maybe they're not showing symptoms yet. I mean, you know, the, the medical science doesn't understand it yet, so you don't know what the incubation time is or how the disease is spread. So. I think Schumer is correct, and it's irresponsible for the United States to not take this seriously, as other governments clearly are, to try and protect their citizens. What about... So I, I don't know, you know... What go, about, go ahead. What, what about traveling, Americans traveling to Asia? I mean, a lot of Americans regularly plan trips, uh, plan trips overseas sure. for vacation or business. They go to Europe, and Europe has right. some cases. Um, and of course, Asia, you know, a number of cases, especially China. Um, but what about, what's your advice to them? What about, uh, what about pursuing some travel that people had planned at this point in time? Mm. Well, I, I already, uh, Japanese businesses that have operations in China are pulling their people out. And they're canceling any type of business trips into, especially the Wuhan area, but in China in general. So many businesses, and I imagine many people, are are canceling their trips. I don't know if that's uh, the advice that I would give. Certainly, I don't think you'd want to go to the area that's been shut down by the Chinese government. In fact, you couldn't get in there anyway. Yeah. But the Japanese government's actually send, sending a plane. Most Japanese uh, citizens got out of that area before the uh, quarantine occurred, but now uh, they're going to send in a plane to get the rest of the remaining Japanese citizens. They're going to uh, get all Japanese people out of that area. Mm. As, so, the, as the U.S. Already is, this, we're doing the same thing. Yes, we're taking the, all the Americans the out of China. To do that. Yeah, well, right. I think all governments are trying to get all of their citizens out of there because obviously they don't want them to become infected and face the risk of dying from this virus. Well, we so got to we got to yeah, follow this, is. Steve. We got to follow it. Uh, we got to talk about it again. We got to see every day how the numbers change, and we we have to make okay. our calculate our own decisions, and uh, and more. We have to be informed about it because I think it is a risk for everyone. Anyway, I will I will see you on yeah. Saturday for our show on Saturday this week. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, Jay. You and Alan Miner, and uh, have a good trip over. And yeah. I hope you don't have any issues at the airport. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey, Jay, shall I bring some face masks with me? Do you want me, uh, some of the Japanese ones are probably, you know, top of the line. I yeah, can bring yeah. them with me. Please do. I look forward okay. to seeing you then. All right. Thank you, Steve Searcher. All right. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Take care. Yeah, always a pleasure, Jay. Thank you. Take care.